So here are a couple of things we can do with the absolute value functions. First off, I have one sketched in here on my axes. Um, notice it looks like a V, a diagonal, 45 degree angles. So the way we write the absolute value function, f of x equals, right, we just use our absolute value notation, put an x in the middle. What this means piecewise, so absolute value functions can also be defined as a piecewise function. So f of x equals, the y values are equal to negative x, the opposite of x for x's less than zero, and f of x, the y values are equal to the positive, the same x values, right, input, output, the same, for the x is greater than or equal to zero. Sure, I could have put my greater than on either one. Let's take a look and make sure that you are okay with that. So when the x's are less than zero, okay, that's over here, right, x is less than zero on the left side of my graph. So the y values are equal to, so I get y equals negative x, that's the equation of that line right there, y equals negative x. If I put in a negative x value, what happens with the absolute value, right? It makes it positive. I get out the opposite. On this side, on the right side, when the x's are greater than or equal to zero, whatever goes in, right? If x goes in, if two goes in, two comes out. The absolute value of a positive number is the same number, so it doesn't change as long as you have a positive number, okay? So let's do a couple of uh, shifts here. So the first one I have is a reflection, which we know because of the negative sign. So in red, we'll graph y equals the opposite of f of x, or negative f of x, where f of x is our absolute value there. So that means, right, this amount here, those y values are always positive, but then, Right, we have a negative on top or in front, so that will make all of them negative. So this is a reflection over the x-axis. So I would, let's see, oh, I have a straight edge. With some arrows. Domain stays the same, all real numbers, range flips exactly, negative infinity to zero. Second one I have, I have a reflection and a shift. So we're going to reflect over the x-axis and then shift up three. Another way you might think about that is this amount right here, this negative f of x, that is always a negative number, right? Because the f of x part's always positive. With the negative sign there makes this co or this factor here, this term I should say, always negative or at most a zero. And to that I'm going to add three. Right, so three is the most I could ever be. So that's going to be my maximum value. And then I have that reflection. I'm just going to try to draw lines with slopes of one. And it goes on forever. I just stopped there because it was stopping looking linear to me. There we go. Still has the same slope. These should be parallel. Pretend like I can draw. Domain, still all real numbers. My range now, right, got flipped and shifted. So my range for the green graph, you can read it off negative infinity to 3. One of the other things that happens with absolute value functions is we might be interested in knowing what's the absolute value of a function that's not linear. So here I've sketched um, a quadratic function, and somebody might ask you, hey, could you sketch then a new function, y equals the absolute value of the one that you have? Okay. So now the input to my absolute value function is itself a function. So how would that rule play out from our piecewise defined? Right, so we'll get just the same that we put in comes out as long as the y values were positive. Okay. Here, right, these graphs here, when it starts off positive, those stay the same. 
but we get out the opposite when our function is less than zero. So here, right down below the x-axis, here's where our function values are negative. So if I want to graph the absolute value, I need these guys to all reflect, right? I need the opposite. I need a reflection. I need these negative ones to reflect over the x-axis. And I didn't give myself quite enough space, but we'll pretend like we can go up four, three, up four. So that's how you can graph the absolute value of a function that's not linear.